Hey guys, I'm Meredith, one of the pulmonary fellows, and today I'm going to be talking to you about pulmonary function tests, also known as PFTs. So disclaimer, there's many nuances to PFTs. I just want to start with the basics. I'm going to show you guys how I teach patients, because I think if you can understand that, you can understand the basics of PFTs. All right, so the patients know that they do three maneuvers in the PFT lab. The first is spirometry. The second is lung volumes, and the third is called a DLCO. Spirometry, I usually tell them, is sort of how good you are at breathing out. And they'll remember this because they'll have to blow out really hard in the PFT lab. Lung volumes, on the other hand, are more about how good you are at breathing in, meaning what's the total amount of air you can get into your lungs. And they'll measure that as well. The DLCO, I usually describe it to them as basically how good their air sacs are at getting the oxygen out of the air they breathe in into their blood supply, so into those capillaries that are surrounding the alveoli. This is essentially measuring gas exchange. So now the patient probably wants to know, what am I looking for? And I bet y'all want to know what I'm looking for too. So I always look at things in the same order, spirometry, lung volumes, then DLCO. So spirometry, there's mainly two things, FEV1, and that's how much you can blow out in one second, so how much can you blow out fast, and then there's an FVC, a force vital capacity, and that's sort of how much can you blow out total, and those are the main two numbers I want you to know for spirometry. So the next thing that I'm going to look at is the lung volumes. So the two things I want you to know about lung volumes are one, the TLC, the total lung capacity, how much air uh, you got in there, how much total air can you get in at your maximum breath, and then the RV or the residual volume, so how much air do you have left over, um, how much are you unable to blow out. So lastly, the DLCO, which stands for the diffusing capacity of the lung of carbon monoxide. So that's all that stands for. And honestly, all I'm really looking at this number for is to know, is there something wrong with your air sacs or with your pulmonary vessels? And that's the main point of the DLCO. All right, so what am I looking for in each category? Spirometry is going to be airflow, limitation, asthma, COPD, things like that. Lung volumes, it could be chest wall disease like scoliosis, it could be obesity, um, or it could be an interstitial lung disease, something that causes fibrosis, essentially. The DLCO, um, I want to look for lung destruction, whether that's in the form of emphysema or that fibrosis that I mentioned. They can both do that. Um, and I also want to look for vascular disease like pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary embolism, or capillaries that are destroyed by emphysema as well. One thing I do want to note is that lung volumes, if they're actually enlarged, um, is also a clue for asthma and COPD. And we're going to talk about this more in the lung volumes lecture coming up. So that's it. That's all I have for this very brief sort of patient-centered lecture. Um, the next lectures will do spirometry and elaborate a little bit more on that and then lung volumes. And then after that, we will do DLCO. Um, and then if you guys are interested, I can do some case examples for you. So thank you guys so much. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, it's just a primer, um, but if you have any questions just from that, please feel free to email me mkgreer at emory.edu. Thanks guys, good luck studying.